In this video, we're going to be exploring how to repair the micro USB connector and some of the issues surrounding it. I open up the product and carefully inspect the circuit board. I look near the USB connector to find points where I can solder fine wires to the four terminals that I need. That's ground, 5 volts, data plus, and data minus. I then drill a nice big hole in the case in a convenient location and stuff the wires through. I dig into my junk bin for an old USB-A cable. I cut off the cord near the end and take a razor blade and dissect the plastic insulation around the connector. All I want to have left at the end is the metal housing of the connector with the four wires sticking out. I carefully splice all the wires together, carefully checking that I've got all the pins connected right and then I insulate them with a bit of heat shrink tubing. Once it's wired, I give it a quick test to make sure I haven't messed it up. Then I grab my epoxy plumber's putty and form a nice big tumor around where I want the connector to be mounted. This tumor holds the connector in place and makes a really robust strain relief. I use a standard USB-A extension cable to connect it to my computer. It's really big, it's very robust, and I know it's not going to break. Often the easiest thing to do is just drill a hole in the case, thread through an old USB-A cable with the end cut off, strip the ends and solder them right to the USB connector, and just be done with it. So I think by now you kind of know where I'm going with this. Don't even bother trying to replace those connectors. Why would you do all that fiddly, difficult micro soldering to basically recreate the same thing all over again? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It's a no win, so just don't even bother. Just bypass it and be done with it. The micro USB connector is a bastard love child formed from the union of terrible product design, economic pressure, and ever shrinking product form factors. Its main flaw can be easily illustrated with simple physics. If you take any connector, you'll notice there's a part that goes into something and then there's a part that comes out that holds the cable. There's a ratio between these two parts that determines how much force is applied to the mechanism of the connector inside. The longer the end is that hangs out, the more torque is applied to the connector. If the part that fits in is too short, the leverage created by this relationship creates enormous mechanical stresses when you tug on the cord. In the case of this USB connector, the housing is just made out of simple folded sheet metal that sort of knit together with a prayer. So when you tug on the cord, the forces exerted on that sheet metal inevitably cause those tiny little parts to get mangled. And this is not your fault. You're not a heavy-handed ape. It's a terribly designed connector. So give yourself a little slack. We can calculate this mechanical leverage ratio simply by measuring the piece that goes into the connector and the piece that sticks out that holds the cable and calculate the ratio of those two. For example, our micro USB connector has a ratio of 6 to 23, which is 3.83. If we compare this to other connectors that we're already very familiar with, you'll see that this ratio is very high. For example, a USB-A connector, 2.75. A standard AC power plug, 2.77. A female AC power plug, 2.5. An RJ45 Ethernet plug, 1.91. The only connector I could find with a more ridiculous ratio is like an XLR audio connector which has a ratio of 6.36 to 1, which is enormous. But look at how robust the female jack is. It's a solid cast metal part made to withstand those forces. No problem there. The problem is when you try something like this with some sketchy sheet metal. When you combine these factors together to make a connector that has a pin pitch of 0.65 millimeters, which is 25 thousandths of an inch apart, 
It's just a disaster. So if you are involved in the product design process, if you're a product manager, if you're an engineer or an industrial designer, anyone involved with the process of creating, designing and producing these goods, if somebody above you says, put a micro USB connector in that product, just say no. Obfuscate, divert, connive, scheme, whatever you have to do to make sure that piece of crap doesn't end up in your product. Because if it does, you're part of the problem. You're basically just creating more landfill and more churn and a lot of consumer dissatisfaction. Just say no, make it stop. Now here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is my Fleur E5 infrared thermal imaging camera. It's a fantastic tool. It's not cheap either. This thing is like 1300 US dollars and that's not a low cost product by any means. It's also like made for kind of industrial applications. It's very robust. It's covered with rubber. Like I'm sure I could drop it and it would still work. That's all fine. I open up this massive rubber bung plug here and what do you think's inside? A micro USB connector. Why? Why on earth would you do that? You've got this pathetic, fragile, little tiny connector that's completely out of scale with this product. It's going to break. I don't want to have to do ugly things to this expensive tool to fix it. But that's the reality. Why? It's like if all your friends start shooting heroin and you're just going to think that that's now a good idea because you throw common sense out the window. No, stop. As consumers, I really think it's time we start taking responsibility for this wasteful cycle that we've created with the disposable mentality towards products. If we as consumers seek out and purchase higher quality products, that we're willing to pay more for because we know they're going to last, we're going to get the value and the satisfaction out of it, companies will make those products and we can start to break this cycle of constant churn and disposable crap. Because if we don't do something about it, that's what it's going to be forever until we're just drowning in garbage. <sighs> I, I feel a lot better now. I really needed to vent a little there. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Help me grow this channel. Thank you all very, very much.